What is going on? Moving meals. Moving meals. I got to be on a bus in like six hours. And I'm Oof. not happy about it. And if any of you kids are watching this, you better not be grabby. Or I'm coming <laughs> for you. Because <laughs> I'm not going to be in the mood. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> um, one, of the, anyway. one of the students is just terrified now. He'll spread walked the word. In, walked in the other day. First thing I heard. Hey, uh, what'd you think of Black Pan- or Black Adam? What was your review? Mm. They were trying to get me to say like a certain line, and I was like, brutally average. <laughs> uh, and anyway, they all cheered and said, "Go, Alex, go!" go Alex. <laughs> no, 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 they can't call me by my first name. I'll kill them. Uh, <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right. Uh, we're here for the Black Panther review, non-spoiler review, until Al starts to need needs to start talking, and yeah. uh, we'll warn you if that happens. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Moving on patrons. Go join that. Get some merch, all that good stuff. Uh, let's get into it, Kyle. What are your positives of the film? Black Panther. Here we go. I already you know. I say. Well, just wait a minute. Wait no. a minute. I know. Because <laughs> I do have a lot of good things to say about this. Because I can't imagine the emotional uh, circumstances, the anger, the sadness that would come from losing not only a talented actor, but just a talented friend and colleague as Chadwick Boseman. And I was very impressed and thoroughly surprised by how that emotion and that weight is handled throughout this movie. Uh, Ryan Coogler uh, partially wrote this and uh, directed it, of course. Wrote the story. Was it just himself or was there a writing partner? I I, I haven't checked in a while. He wrote the story. Um, he also wrote an original script. I sent you the video. Did you watch the video of him getting no. choked up? No, I haven't seen that video. You're the worst. There's a great v- little video I found, uh, of a clip out from a podcast of Ryan Coogler talking about how he wrote, uh, his first draft and was trying to get in touch with Chadwick. And when he finally did, Chadwick uh, was pretty close to, I think, uh, the end at this point and told him he didn't want to read it. He said, you know, I'd rather just read a finished script. And the mm-hmm. whole time Ryan Coogler's fighting back tears to even tell the story. And it was, it was powerful. No, he, he wrote the screen, this screenplay with a partner, but the story is gotcha. by him. I mean, he, gotcha. he said to Marvel a couple of years ago, you can't use Namor. I want to use him. He's mine. Mm. I want his first appearance being Black Panther, Black Panther too. Anyway, continue. Cool. Well, thank you for that context, but it, it does what go to for. show then um, the amount of, I guess, <clears throat> pressure that, not only him, but the whole cast, the whole crew was under, but you could tell that there was still that emotional passion that went into this project. And I was very impressed by not only the passing of uh, this actor was handled, but also how it was able to work throughout the storyline of this movie, particularly with uh, Shuri. And I thought Letitia Wright, on top of all of the actors in this movie, of course, the likes of Winston Duke and Angelica, uh, Bassett, but also, um, but but mainly Letitia Wright for handling this with such grace and composure, and for really getting the audience to also be as emotionally gri- gripped for how they were handling his passing. And like I said earlier, I think it's really well woven into the story. It's I think one of the more personal <clears throat> movies that Marvel has really had. And it really gets the audience to feel like they're a part of almost a grieving process, but also being able to be part of this emotional story to be able to uh, be expressed here. And that's what I particularly liked. I really liked that I was also feeling the same angers, the same sadness and emotions at the same uh, uh, points of the story, excuse me, that... Uh, the cast was going through, like I said, particularly with Shuri, whose storyline I was very much the most impressed with because uh, she she mainly is kind of a side character. And I don't think she was touched too much in the first Black Panther. But I think the second one, they really do a good job at making her in the forefront, but also a very uh, more well-rounded character to go to the certain um, points of her grieving processes that I was very impressed with. Um, and also I'm spacing on the actor's name. I'm going to look it up in a second. So that way I can give it a proper shout out. But, um, the actor who plays Namor, I thought the Namor aspects was 
what very well handled. I thought it really worked well tying in with um, not only what Wakanda is going through, but also what the character of Sherry is going through. And that actor does do a very, very impressive job. Um, so hopefully Tenoch, we can look up his name in her, 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 I think it, I, I apologize okay. for what's your name, but uh, yeah, but well done by him. Uh, well done by the rest of the cast. Well done by the crew for making this movie and well done to Ryan Coogler and Marvel for being able to make one of your more emotionally riveting movies. And, um, one of your most impressive movies, I would say. Um, but I'll hand it off to you now, Alex. What do you got to say? Um, I think, the, I think Kevin Feige made the best choice in the whole wide world to, uh, that we've been talking about it for months. Kevin Feige's mm -hmm. too thin. Kevin Feige said, go make your movie. And that's exactly what he should have done. Because this is not this is exactly how you handle this horrible situation. It's something Star Wars did not do. It's something Fast and Furious was able to pull off. Who would have thought? Um, with Paul, okay. with the unfortunate passing of Paul Walker, they do a very oh. good job at passing. Yes. Can you knock it off here, pal? Can you? Sorry, remember? I thought you were talking about Han. I like I remember oh Fast Nine. I know. Sorry. Sorry. Han is alive in real life. That actor's alive. I, I thought you meant the character. I'm sorry. Please continue. Ignore me. <laughs> Star Wars struggled with the passing of Carrie Fisher. Yeah. They struggled to handle that story wise later. Fast and Furious managed to pull it off with the unfortunate passing of Paul Walker. Mm -hmm. They have done maybe the best job at telling a story within a, a world that had to deal with something like this. I think Chadwick, I don't know Chadwick. I wish I did. Um, as you know, a fan of just liking to listen to interviews and stuff like that from things I've heard. It sounds like he was just an incredible person. So I, from everything I've gathered, I bet you he would have been in love with this film. Um, this movie is pure culture. I, 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 I love the culture. It's, it's reasons that I have loved what they have started to do. How, why black Panther is so great. And the first one's so important. This one right there. Why I think Shang Chi really rocks. Um, there's so much great. I, the way they handle it is so beautiful. It's, it's just, it makes me think of friends I have who, who are, are, are different ethnicities who have talked to me about their cultures and talk about, death and how death is a celebration for them where where we always look at it as more of a tragedy it's tragedy and i just i was blown away all the performances are phenomenal um what's the actress's name that plays shuri uh leticia wright leticia wright steals the show obviously she's the lead she's the lead and all the trailers the final trailers said all right she's your black panther and then all the actors were like <laughs> is she and then all the idiots were like <laughs> i don't know i'm listening to the actors yeah she was She's our Black Panther, and I'm here for it. Spoilers. That's not a, it's not a spoiler. Pay attention well, to the trailers. Well, you may never know. You may never know. Shut, shut just, up. Just um, covering our bases. Everybody's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Winston Duke, I really love. Denai Guerrero was fantastic. Angela Bassett. And and again, the actor who plays Namor, who I just don't want to mispronounce his name again, Tenoch, is he's fantastic. That he was there was his first real encounter in the movie of of the Wakandans was terrifying to me. I was legit nervous and scared. I was like, what? This is insane. I haven't felt this way since Thanos was standing there holding Tony Stark's head saying, I hope they remember you. I was blown away. This movie is, is one of the best. They let them make their movie and they told a good story. They told a true story. And I think people who, the few who I have seen say they do not like this wanted Spider-Man far from home or no way home. They wanted cameos. They wanted an insane action set. And where I think Spider-Man does a good job of showing some trauma and some grief. This does it at a true and realistic level that I don't, uh, everyone can relate to because we've all lost someone. And I just, I was blown away. I thought everything looked fantastic. I thought the movie, um, was just beautiful. I mean, I'm riding off the high of just seeing it. I want to see it again. I'm already planning, I think, next weekend to go again. Uh, maybe take the old man with me. Go get out. Go get some corn or something. You know what I mean? Uh, but I, I, right now I got it in my top five already. 
I think it was that good. Mm. And I think the people who won't like it are going to be a, it just, there were, there were scenes that made me think game of Thrones. The best part about game of Thrones is the conversations is the characters mm-hmm. talking. And I loved listening to the characters talk. And let me tell you right now, Lapita Nyong'o just jumped back into the top three of yep. the celebrities. I would leave my lady for. <laughs> I'm she just has, all she has that thing, man. She has haven't seen presence. her in a minute. Yeah, it's yeah, that, yeah that's a good we way to about put that it on there. our podcast. That's yeah. a, that's a, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. You're, yeah, you're talking about a lot about presence. Yeah, yeah. I like I like presents. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> some of those outfits. Uh, she was fantastic too. I'm glad she's back. the The movie's phenomenal. I loved it. Uh, what were your negatives? I know I've expressed this in other movies, and I know that this is probably my crappy theater's fault. Move. Regal. <laughs> Move. Regal theaters. Fix your screens. Fix your projections. But I do in wonder. In small towns. In, I've been to yeah, a Regal hopefully in a big not city. everywhere, but especially I've been to a Regal in a big city. Popcorn still suck, but a much better theater. <laughs> but a much better projection. Look, I, I am a bad judge when it comes to current uh blockbusters and when it comes to lighting particularly in nighttime shots but if my crappy theater systems were able to make batman look good at night you know with the batman coming out like those nighttime shots were incredible i feel as though there's an issue with production when it comes to making nighttime shots currently like i'm watching you know i just recently watched you uh Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Nighttime shots in that movie, great, fantastic. Like they look awesome. They're okay. Nowadays, I I couldn't see what I was looking at. Like Alex, the scene you're describing where we first meet them, Namor. Luckily, that performance is so darn good that I also was intimidated by him. But I couldn't see what was going on at all. And again, that could be my crappy theater, Regal. I think it was. And I really hope other people come in the comments section and say that I'm incorrect and they have a better time seeing the movie particularly with nice shots but i am seeing a pattern it maybe is it is the theater but i'm noticing you're coming up shows to my crappy. town this week in in two days I, go maybe go I, saturday maybe i will i go. would love to i hope go. i hope again i he hope won't. i'm wrong <laughs> but i i, I just need issues. to know i just need to know if anyone else is having similar problems if they're noticing these patterns because i am starting i do wonder if for some, whether it's, you know, that nighttime filter that they're doing nowadays since it's, you know, mostly on sound stages or if something's just changed with production that I'm not aware of, but I'm just getting tired of not being able to see shots at the nighttime. So th- that's my main gripe. And I do think there was some uh, shaky cam stuff that I wasn't particularly fond of, though I did think okay. most of the visuals in this movie, cinematography, um, at the action sequences, I thought they were still very good. I just noticed those shaking cam moments. And I'm just rolling my eyes saying, I, I really don't want to keep watching movies with shaky cam. We need to move on from that trend. Um, and, you know, it, it is a long movie, so you might feel the runtime depending on how engaged you are with the story. Um, it didn't bother me too much, but, you know, after a while, you probably can notice depending on who you are as a viewer. And they, they do have to also throw in, you know, the Marvel stuff about, you know, all these other plot lines that are universe building type stuff, which I wasn't the most interested in, but it was fine. It still works for the most part within the story, but I just was way more invested in the emotional main plot that I wish it was that and not the MCU expanded parts of it. So I'll be done with my gripes because I still am very, very positive and very high on this movie, but this is a trend I'm noticing and I'm hope hopefully it's just only my theater, but it's frustrating, you know, it's frustrating whether that's happening in production nowadays or it's frustrating that a theater like Regal can't get their act together. So what about you, Al? Yeah, I thought the nighttime shots were phenomenal. Um, I thought they looked great. I, uh, <clears throat> the MCU connecting stuff, they didn't connect anything. Nothing. A little cameo here and there, maybe. Oh, oh, was it? Was it, was it though? Who knows? Cameo. Yeah, no, you... oh, no, that was no, that was. Is that not what you're? That talk- part was very good. No, that wasn't what I was talking about. You know, just the side plot stuff. Um, 
that has what them, are you uh, talking about spoilers tell me uh i still felt the notion with the new character uh riri kind of setting up her own show she wasn't a bad character but oh you mean ironheart was... yeah yeah her. oh we all know and, ironheart's and... in the movie no, I I know. I'm not I'm not saying that like they're spoiler type stuff. I'm just saying, you know, the MCU connective tissue stuff that kind of is expanding on the world. I just wish it was more focused on the main plot rather than oh, um keep I going off on these more. other. I oh. couldn't disagree more. I think this movie did exactly that in a creative way. They said, "Hey, this is a character that we can expand on. We want to expand on and the I I would I bet, this is my guess, I bet the idea for the show came before, after she was in the movie. I bet you they're looking at dailies going, this is a show. This girl's a show right here. Let's put her, let's Good give be. her a show. I bet Good you be. that happened. I She's integral to the plot. She pushes it forward. I think she mm. was great. I love doing that. I think, um, I guess we're not really in spoiler territory anymore, but I think Ironheart is in the trailers. We knew she was coming. They gave her a full final shot in the last trailer they released like a week ago. Um, I think we need to be, we need to move on, and Iron Man needs to move on. And you think no one in the, you think if if this was realistic and we had a real Iron Man and then he died, <laughs> people wouldn't use his tech. You people wouldn't be like, that's awesome. I want to do that. Stop. You're kidding yourself. Um, I think I I loved it. I thought it was great. The only thing at first I kind of thought of was. I was like, man, we're doing a lot of like fishbowl, fisheye shots. We're doing a lot of blur uh, around the sides. And then I was like, wait a minute. That's because we're talking and we're focusing on the conversation and we're focusing on their faces and the grief mm. that these phenomenal actresses are putting behind it. And I was all for it. I was like, oops, I don't need to be looking at the side right now. I want to be listening to this conversation. So I changed my tune on that pretty fast. Loved it. I thought the nighttime shots worked. The score was phenomenal. Um, I, I, oh, I just I'm gushing because I just <laughs> loved this movie so much. I don't yeah. know if I have a gripe. I thought everything looked great. A few of the underwater shots, maybe James Cameron's right. Put the actors underwater. Doesn't sound yeah. like they maybe did that for this movie. That's fine. I thought it thought it still looked great. Is that true? Did they not put the actors in water? I'd be uh for this movie, I'd be a little shocked cuz I some of them looked good, some of them looked iffy. I, uh, I'm guessing I, I they put them in water, but I don't think a lot of those underwater scenes for long periods of times are probably filmed in a giant pool. My guess is is I mean it the was whales were used real. differently. <laughs> um loved all the, hey spoiler. Oh, sorry. Don't um, know if that was in the trailer. Uh, no, I, I loved it. There was something else you talked about in your gripes that I wanted to touch on, but I don't remember uh, what cam? it is. Oh, I, it's been in almost every Marvel movie. I'm used to it. It's in Winter Soldier, Civil War, Infinity War, Endgame. Sure. I mean, we're always shaking. We're shaking Stop around it. here. No, <laughs> Kyle hates shaking. He's an old man. Shaking no shaking around, around these words. This movie is truly phenomenal. I... I'm just so glad that they were able to let them make this. It was an insanely touching tribute. The way they end the movie, and I'm talking the very end, I won't get into spoilers, but the way they end end the movie yeah. is fantastic. It is a great way to honor Chadwick, I think, as a story, as a, as a director having to deal with such a horrible issue. It was a fantastic way to continue moving forward and and giving praise and love to to someone who has passed and mm. i thought it was insanely beautiful um they don't mess around they uh, f uh, some of the fanboys that i've heard that are like this movie is just okay they didn't get their massive 100,000 action sequences. And some of the action in this was some of my favorite action in the MCU I have seen in a long time. I mm. loved some of the fight scenes in this movie. I loved yeah. the powers. I loved everything about it. I thought Namor, Namor is already, I'm sitting here going, 
Is he as good as Killmonger? Is he better than Killmonger? And I think that is a legit conversation to have because I think he's that yeah. good. And I want to yeah, see a week from now if the hype settles and I, I calm down and I'm like, you know, thinking this this maybe it wasn't as good, but I'm going to enjoy the high while I got it because it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Rihanna just walked in and said, hey, I'm going to win an Oscar too this year. She said, hey, <laughs> let, me, let me win an Oscar. Let me win an Oscar. Let me get a second one. She has one? Why not? Did you say Lupita? Not even a little. I said Rihanna oh, I, for her song Rihanna. at the oh, end of the film. I don't know why I heard Lupita. My bad. No, yeah, no, sure. no idea because those no, are very unique names. Rihanna with a lot oh, of R's boy. and Lupita. <laughs> like, what are we doing here, guys? I'm sorry. It's got to be the beat. I'm not paying you're covering attention. The I need to go to bed. <laughs> Yeah, you're telling me I gotta be up. I gotta be at. I gotta be at high school five thirty a.m. Yeah. Uh, anyway, guys, what do you think? If you've seen Black Panther, third comment below. Let us know. And everybody, please comment. Is your theater too dark? Is it not working? Are the screens I need to know. bad? We need, need to find to out if Kyle truly just needs to buck up and move, or if uh, <laughs> if or or we got to keep tagging Regal until they fix their theater in small towns. Um. Uh, anyway, yeah. comment below, yep. let us know. I'm going to like, subscribe, share. Check us out on the podcast. Go get some merch, all that good stuff. And as always, thanks for watching, Mom. See you guys.